you know, every once in a while, I always go through these periods where I'm like, you know what? Let me just try this for a week. One week, no meat. One week, no that. One week, just this. One week, just that. And now you're a vegan? Yeah. So you've joined my gang, thanks. Well, for a week. After that, I'm going for a strong burger. What? Big one. I'm Clara Hermit. This is In Bed With Clara, and we are back for another season with another episode. And joining me in the bed today, he's a podcaster, DJ, presenter, documentary maker. Bam, bam, bam. Ba, it ba, is ba, 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 Chucky. Ba. I, I could have gone for longer than that, though. How did you learn about sex? J okay, funny. Um, my cousin. I knew people had sex, but I didn't really know what it was, really. And then my cousin, yeah, I'm just going to say his name, Elliot. I'll never forget this. Big up Elliot. Well, no, I don't know if he gave you a good lesson on nah, that. No, nah, he did. Because I was on the bed and I was like, what, do you do that? Like, like going out. And then he was like, nah, you go like that. Oh. And I was like, oh, swear. And he's like, yeah, that's what you do. You go like, like. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then I was like, oh, okay. So that was like my first thing that I learned about sex, that you actually, instead of having sex with the bed, essentially, you go in <laughs> at a certain angle and you go that way. After that, I found one of my mum's Kama Sutra books. Big up Mumsy. Yeah, it showed sex positions and then it showed pubic hair. <gasps> and I remember at the time, I didn't have pubic hair. I was a bit worried about like what that was. Because I didn't know what, I didn't know that. I guess it just kind of went, went from, from there. there. Did you learn anything in school? Mm, no. Do you know what? I think there was like one lesson where they showed something on the TV, but I can't They didn't teach us about sex in school, put it that way. They might have just showed us like one explain. little thing, but that was it. It weren't like, it wasn't, it weren't nothing that was... Useful. Yes. Porn is actually cited as the number one resource for sex education. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? I think that there's pros and cons to it. I'm going to be honest with you. Diplomatic. Right. I started to see different types of sex positions. Obviously, some of the sex positions are just ridiculous. When I see something that is ridiculous, I'm not going to try all the ridiculous stuff. If anything, the, the ridiculous things that I was doing was <laughs> I was copying Justin Slayer. So Justin Slayer used to chop with Timberland boots on and a vest. I bought Timberland boots. I bought Timberland boots and I, when I was in my first relationship, I was chopping with Timberland boots on and a vest. That's as far as my ridiculousness goes. Why do you call uh, having sex with someone chopping? It sounds so like, it doesn't sound nice. It doesn't sound yeah. so like something I want someone to do to me. If I was in a relationship, I wouldn't say I chopped my missus though. But when you're just outside, you're just chopping, isn't it? When you're outside and your Tim's in a vest. <laughs> yeah. just so, chop you should have been chopping wood, yeah. not women in that outfit. <laughs> Oh, it's but supposed you were chopping wood, weren't you? Because you're... I was learning, learning things through the... Yes, you're right. With my wood, I was chop... You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I was learning certain things off the back of that. The way that he was eating the pooch, like certain sex positions or whatever it may be. And I just kind of took the sense out of nonsense from the porn. However, the reason why I think it is a negative thing is because sometimes how your personality is set up, if you then get drawn into certain types of categories and whatnot, you then take elements of the outrageousness and bring it into your private life and this person may not even want that. See like with the anal play and that, like they're not showing the preparation on the anal play. Mm. There's a whole level of preparation. So if you don't have this in mind, you're just gonna go in the bedroom and just do some. And expect that to be normal. And there's yeah. like, there's, a, there's statistics out at the moment where there's like so many women, but especially young women going to, to the doctors with anal tears, mm. like loads of issues because A, I think there's this kind of like, oh, well, if we have anal sex, I'm not going to get pregnant. But mm. also there's a the pressure from men who have been watching porn. And like you say, just think, boom, it should be that easy. So there's no lube, mm. there's no like nothing involved whatsoever. And it's causing people real like damage. Yeah. You need communication before yeah. you even do them things. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? At a time in life, especially a lot of women, I, I would say, they were having sex more for the man and not really for themselves. Mm -hmm. So now you add that to a time where porn is so accessible, it still speaks to that. It's like, okay, as a young guy, your objective is to do a couple of things, to come, mm -hmm. um, to show off in some way, shape or form, and then to go back and tell your brethren what you've done. But not to make but her not to, Right but not to pleasure her. You discovered that later on, and I did. I, dis I discovered that later on. For me, when I was first having sex, ultimately, I was just kind of having sex for me. Selfish. Yeah, but then, do you know what happened? What? I got older, and I started to understand certain things. 
Then I got into a longer relationship. And then do you know what? We just start, I start, oh my God. I just started learning a couple of things. You know, when I started to see that I could take her to a different type of place, my selfishness shifted. I was still being selfish, but my selfishness was, I want her to feel as good as she could possibly be. Yeah, so that I can feel good. yeah, yeah definitely. 100%. <laughs> But I do think that it's this kind of idea that guys are still out there getting theirs. A lot mm. of women aren't. It's like the statistics for the percentage of women that fake orgasm. I mm. think it's, we were just talking to Grace, I think it's one in four men admit to have having faked an orgasm before. I've faked, I've faked. Have you? Mm. Why? Why did you do it? Why was the first time I did it? The one, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll tell it. Yeah, one of the reasons why I did it was because when we went into the dog position, she didn't have a clean ass, And so... I then got a mad odor from the ass. So then I thought, shit. I'm like, what? <laughs> literally, so literally. Then I thought, oh my God, like I need to be really focused for me to stay hard because if this is going to be distracting for me, which means I'm going to lose my erection. So I put her back on her back quite quickly. And then she was like, is everything okay? And I was like, yeah. Then I went in and I was like, no, nah, I'm losing it. I'm losing this erection. I'm losing it. So then I just thought, you know, I just faked it. So you didn't have to tell her? I didn't tell her, yeah, so I didn't tell her. It, you know, then there was another one as well. Oh God, no. But it was only because, like, I'd already come. I just knew I wasn't going to be able to bust. Sometimes as men, yeah, we feel like when you're having sex for ages, that that's the vibe. But that's not the vibe. Like, no one wants to be having sex for ages. No one wants, no one wants to be having sex for a long period of time and all of that. So you know what? Instead of me being mature enough at the time to just be like, you know what, I know she's got one. I already got one before, we're good. I just thought, Wait, let me just fake this because in my immature mind, I probably was thinking that she might think that there's something wrong with her. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I guess like when I was younger and, and when I say younger, 39, like into my early 30s as well, mm -hmm. before I was like really confident to be like, no. But then also I think I select better people to have sex with now. Right, okay. <laughs> Do you communicate? Do I? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now I'm completely like confident yeah. and comfortable to do that and talk to someone and... Because that's a problem, isn't it? Like, most people are not like... I know a lot of women feel like they can't because for many different reasons, but like, I think it is really important to still give it a go though. Mm. To still say no, like, can you come a little bit higher? Can you go a little bit lower? Can you do this or could you try this? Could be whatever. Or like, like, slow down. Or slow down, down exactly. Like, loosen up a little bit. Like whatever it may loosen be. Loosen up? Yeah, man, maybe. <laughs> oh yeah loosen up everyone loosen up do you think that it's acceptable to watch porn and masturbate when you're in a relationship like hands down i'm gonna say i totally do think it is because sometimes people get really like upset about that as well I'm, i mean i'm sure women do i've experienced with men who were like offended that i masturbate i know where it comes from go on i mean a lot of that is ego driven isn't it because it's like if i know that you're watching porn and you're about to orgasm with me in mind then I, there's no problem with it whatsoever but if you are watching porn and you are <laughs> orgasm you're having an orgasm with a different thought in mind then i think that's where the ego is touched from um, um a man's point of view. Maybe it might be the same for women. I'm not, I'm not sure you can speak for women, yeah? yeah? But I think that like, that's where men would feel funny about that. I wouldn't say that it's not acceptable, but I would just say, I wouldn't want to know though. They're going to do that, that's cool. But I wouldn't want to know, oh yeah, like I, w I watch porn and like, to get myself off and stuff like that. I feel like that would just touch me a little bit still. I wouldn't like it. Cause I don't, I, I really genuinely feel like if, like if I was with someone and they were doing it all, like were watching porn and like masturbating all the time, I might have a problem with it, but if it's like... Well, what's your category? I mean, that's the, that's the question. What's the category? What, you want to well, know if, what they were watching? Okay, I guess that that would be, like if they were watching something weird, then that would be different. But it, like in general, I think it's kind of like quite healthy for someone to do that. And I don't, I don't really care if they're looking at someone, like it's porn. Yeah. That's the whole point. No, so no. That's what, the, you, so what, hear what I'm saying, yeah? It's not the people on the screen. There is that little part in your mind where you're thinking about someone or something, right? Usually, yeah. right? So you're either drawing back from an experience that you might have had with someone or you're fantasizing about something with someone or whatnot. It's not the person on the screen. Like, and whenever I I've masturbated- No, I think I, I do one of two things. Either it's completely imagination, right. which is then I'm fantasizing about somebody, right. yeah? Or 
Or actually, it doesn't have to. It could be like a made up scenario, to be fair. My imagination is quite good. Okay. First of all, like when I'm watching porn, I'm not fantasizing about having sex with that person. I'm just thinking about what that act would feel like if someone was doing it to me. It doesn't it's not specific about so it's that not, person. It's not, a, it's not a particular person. I suppose I do have to find them attractive. Yeah, but it's but, still, but then but then there's still someone, someone in mind, mind, right? Whether it is... But wait, but also, like for years, I only watched uh, lesbian porn and right. I would say that I'm completely straight. Yeah, yeah. But because when I watched like straight porn, it didn't turn me on because there wasn't anything happening in that. I'm like, yeah, I would like someone to right, do that. Right, right, right. I did meet someone one time who told me that she was in a relationship with a guy and they would have sex with each other. He wasn't able to make her come. So after he came, she would just lay in the bed and she would just play with herself and she would come. And then he obviously, well, he had a problem with that. And then she asked me, why do I think that he would have a problem with that? And I thought, well, maybe the only reason why he may have a problem with that is like, one is that feel like that, that thought of feeling like he can't satisfy you. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is, is well, what's in your mind when you're about to come? Like, who is it that is making you do that? And then that's where a little bit of the jealousy kicks in. It's like, oh, like, who is it that you're thinking about that is making you do that? Which is what would go through someone's mind. But I've been in that scenario before and guys do get pissed off with it. And I think, yeah. I think that's more of an ego thing though. It, actually, it's you, all ego. If you, if you wanted to, you could actually just get involved. Like you don't it's have to just ego. be upset. But even what we're talking about now, even that, it's, that's all ego. It's quite self-indulgent to be honest. Because essentially what I'm saying is for a lot of people, it's like, how comes I'm not good enough? Why has it got to be about someone else and yeah, not about me? The person's laying next to you, probably not thinking about somebody else. You might be thinking about them and they could be getting involved with what you're doing or they could That's just be All that is is communication though, isn't it? If you turn around and say, you know what? No, nah, like, why are you assuming that it's about someone else? It's actually, it's, um, it could be about you. Why don't you just dive in and just help me? Then I just feel like you can't be in a strop with that. You just can't be in a strop with that. But if you, don't say, if you don't say nothing about it, and you just do it. Yeah, but that, that would be a bit strange, wouldn't it? If you didn't say anything to them, surely you would say something to them. What do you say? See, when you say, you know, have you ever done that, by the way? Yeah, I have done that. And what, what have you said? Well, like, I've what? Got, I've just, I, don't, I think I would just, if, in, if I'm trying to think back to a scenario where I've done that, I probably wouldn't be like, hey, guess what? I, I would, they would know that I haven't come. Yeah. And then I would probably try and get them involved. But some people do not want to get involved. They're actually not happy. Yeah, once they bust their thing, they're just done. That's it. And then they're not concerned about your pleasure anymore. And then yeah. it's like, okay, well, if you're going to be like that, then fuck you. Right, I hear that. Do it myself. I hear that. Um, cool. Reportedly, 60% of women admit to being dissatisfied with their sex life. Right. Does that surprise you? No, that's the ones that admit it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's higher. I think it's probably quite difficult to find that pairing, that sexual pairing. I think, it is, I think it's a lot more difficult than we would even like to accept. The reality is there's so many of us feel like we're just laying it down and whatnot, but I think a lot of us are taking, <laughs> I think a lot of us are like not looking at this properly. I feel like that would probably be a lot higher if, people, if women were really honest about it still. But the other thing it, like to say at this point as well is I think like I've definitely experienced men in my life who are threatened by sex toys and I know other friends have as well. Yeah. That is like a really big thing for them where they're mm. just like, why, why do you need that? Or like, don't use that? Or why have you got that? And I think that that is something that just really needs to be shifted because Definitely. you can use sex toys in your relationship, in like couple sex or group sex or whatever sex you're having yeah. to make it better. Like, I don't think men should see sex toys as a threat. They should see them as their, their threat. He's just breaking I think we bit. just got to like, sex is probably the thing where ego is at play the strongest mm. majority of the time mm. in life. And I think if we were able to just put the ego but to the side say, a little bit. But just to say, especially for men, because I don't think women necessarily, our egos are involved. I think that we, no. like, we're kind of, it's quite vulnerable. Like women, I mm. think, I'm not, I can't speak for all women. I'm not all women, but I think it's like, you're putting yourself into a place of, of vulnerability with somebody. Mm. And, you know, like you want to please that person. And, and especially when you, like we've spoken about when you first start having sex and it's kind of that you think that to be a, like a woman that's good at sex, you have to make mm. the man have a good time, you know? So you, you don't even know that it's about you because no one told you that your pleasure is important or how to even get it. Yeah, yeah, of course. And that's like, uh, more so when I'm talking about the ego side of it. I'm just talking about from our side. I'm like, if we push that to the side a little bit, then you, you'll learn a little bit more. I know from your, your podcast that you and your friends are comfortable talking about sex and, and masturbation, but do you and your friends discuss techniques and how to be better at pleasuring women? We don't, admittedly. 
But you know what I think I'm lightly conscious of is that like I'm very comfortable about talking about me and the things that I'm going to do and that. But I never want to portray that like I have it all figured out with women in the bedroom. So like there's certain things that I do that I feel work a lot of the time, yeah? But I don't want to, I don't want to come across, I don't want it to seem as though I am almost trying to entice women to have sex with me. Because that's the way that sometimes it could look like, oh, you know what? Yeah, this is what I like to do with a pussy and I like to do this, that and the fourth and whatnot. Like, no, I'm not saying to discuss it on camera. Oh, but, in life? Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. That's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, yeah, camera. definitely. Yeah, definitely, all the time. I might say something that I've done and then someone might say like, bro, I swear. And I'll be like, yeah, bomb this work, whatever. And then maybe he might go off and then do it. Or someone will say something and I'm like, I'm a sponge in it. So it's like, if I hear a guy talking about something that he's done that seems like it works or whatever, and it, se it seems like it's something that maybe is in my character to do, then I would do it. But I also like learn things from having women friends too. Mm -hmm. So I'll listen to them when they're telling me about their, ex their sexual experiences with men. And as far as I'm concerned, it's like, if a group of women are all saying the same thing, then in my head, I'm just like, okay, well, I'm definitely not doing that then. Cause I don't want to be put in the WhatsApp group as the guy that was, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? But like, but yeah, as a guy, we, def yeah, we definitely do that. But it's not, the, it, the conversations ain't like a, yo, bro, you might want to try this. It's more like I did this and this was the reaction I got from that. And it's like, what, serious? Okay, boom. No, but isn't that how we learn? You don't have to give someone like a, a... A direct code. Yeah, or like a... I'm talking about like an open dialogue where you're actually talking about where it focuses on like female pleasure as opposed to just male pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is important for men to be having those conversations. I do think that like the person who is the privilege should be the one who speaks up the most. What I mean by that is, is that it's good to hear women in this context, yeah, talking about being pleasured a certain way and the things that they like and whatever else, yeah. But I do think that like for guys, it actually comes off stronger when another man says, yo, bro, that's not, you shouldn't do that, bro. Like, that's mad. You should actually listen to her and think about, because you know what it's like, sometimes when you're just hearing someone just, you're hearing the opposite person say it, it's like, okay, well, yeah. It just goes through one ear and comes out the other. It's the same way that I- So you think men w would take more heed of what other men say as opposed to what women say when it comes to women's pleasure. I'm gonna go a little bit deep to make a point, yeah? Cool. You see like, for example, like racism in football and that, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's cool when you see black players walking off the pitch, but I just feel like the point is stronger when white players say, no, 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 I'm not having that. I'm not having that. I'm walking off the pitch. I'm walking off. That way, the person who is doing the oppressing in some way mm -hmm. is now listening to their brother or whoever and saying, right, like my actions is now causing them to, 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 to move a certain way, which now makes me, I might need to educate myself a little bit. In the ideal world, not all people are gonna do that, yeah. but some will do, do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? So I think it's the same with sex. I think it's good to hear women talking about what they like and what pleasures them and all of these type of things. But I do think it's important that men also say, yeah, bro, I eat pussy. Like, she likes that. Like, or, you know what, she it. likes this, that, and the fourth and whatnot. It's still a little bit, when you say to a certain man, oh yeah, like, I go down on a woman, or I eat pussy or whatnot, some men are still like. <laughs> but if, a, <laughs> if a woman says it to a lot of men, it's just like, nah, that's just what, nah, you. But, it, but isn't, isn't that just like normalizing stuff, right? It's just like, you know what you're talking about with, with racism, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, but you know, maybe you might look at, if it was like black players walking off the pitch and it's like, yeah, of course, because they're playing like the race card. Whereas when yeah. it's a white person, it's like, oh, they look like me and they're yeah. saying this is- So maybe well. there's something actually really in it. Yeah. Like maybe there's something, maybe Which there's a biasness take, in it. By the way, it shouldn't take it that. It shouldn't take that, exactly. But I was just making a big point to- yeah. to, to get, get to the point yeah. that men listen to other men more than they do women. But listen to women too. Eating pussy is good for you. Absolutely, there's vitamin P in it. Vitamin P. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah. Minerals. Do you think there are double standards when it comes to men and women talking openly about sex and the way that that's perceived by society? I think that the double standard, like sometimes we'll discuss certain things, like a man might say certain things, and then if a woman says it, she's like, can be slandered for it. Mm -hmm. But really, in essence, we shouldn't say it anyway, really. Just because we're doing something or saying something mad doesn't mean that you should say something mad because we're already saying something mad. We actually need to address the fact that we're saying something 
mad over here or we're saying we're talking in the terminology we're talking in the terminology that could be degrading or disrespectful or whatnot but as a just in general just in general yeah i think that like we can still talk very openly about just our sexual experiences and that especially when it comes to sleeping with a certain amount of women but women are not able to at the moment that she goes past three but the moment she goes past three man Men are like, what? It is insane to them. What do you think that grown women have been doing? Like, what do you think they do? That they just sit around and wait for you to show up? That's what some people would like to think. You're delusional. And also, like, what fucking difference does it make? It makes no difference whatsoever. Unless someone told you, you would have no clue. Women are being hammered with that shit from a young age. And it makes you feel like you're a bad person just because you enjoy having sex and you've had like se- like multiple sexual partners. I don't, uh, right now, I don't give a shit and I really don't care. And it means, it makes, I just find it hilarious that people can actually call the, be a grown up and still be bothered by something it's like ridiculous. that. But there were times in my life where I did, I was like, what is, this is horrible. Mm. Most of all of what we're talking about right now is it's all about ego, yeah. the majority. And the other thing is, is that like, the reality is most people are not going to want to agree to this, yeah? But loads of men do things for men. I actually watched a sick, someone, who was it? I can't even remember the guy who was talking about it, but he was basically like, at one point something changed. Even when it came down to the way that we was dressing, like back in the day, not in my day, this is before all of this, this guy was talking from the sixties or whatever. This is never to say that men were, treating women better then. Mm-hmm. It's not to say that. We're just talking about a context, yeah? He was like, yo, when we were going out, I was putting on my shoes, my shoes were for women. When I was, when I put these clothes on, I put my aftershave on or whatnot, it was like, if I was single, I was, I was outside to like, you know, trying to court a woman and try to impress a woman a certain way. I wanted to smell nice. I wanted to look good. I wanted to dress a certain way or whatnot, just so that I, it could help with my chances in doing that. But he was like, now, enough times men are doing stuff so that a next man can say that's hard. So it's like, yo, see them crepes there? Oh, those crepes are hard. Those, this is hard. This is, and it's like, that filters into the sex. It's like, again, I, I think I mentioned earlier on, when, you, when we first started having sex or when I first started having sex, there was a couple of things at play. One, I want my objective was to come. Two, it was to show off a little bit, hence the Tims and whatnot. Who am I showing off to? That's not even her. I'm doing another man, sh- another man showed me that. Another man showed me that. And then the third one, which is the biggest one is, I go outside and I tell my brethren, yo, this is what I did. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like none of that is really about her. So you now take a grown adult, it changes a bit, but ultimately a lot of it is about that. So. The perception is, if my woman has now been with a whole bunch of other men, there's a couple of things at play here. One, it makes me look mad to other men because- But how would the other men know? Right, exactly. But let me just finish though. So it looks mad to other men. Then it's about the other man, the, the actual other man. What has the other man got that I ain't got that is gonna make me, is his ting longer? Is it thicker? Is he, does he put you in a certain thing? This also goes to the, the orgasm thing. It's like, if you didn't have an orgasm, if you never had an orgasm before, then some of these people wouldn't even have a problem with it. But the thought of knowing that at some point in your life, you had an orgasm with another man and I can't give you an orgasm. What is that again? It's ego. But not only is it ego, it's about other men. <laughs> Why are they like this? Why are men like it's this? It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. It's crazy. Yeah. Do you call your friends out if they make misogynistic comments or jokes? Or if they're like, if your one of your friends was talking about like a woman's body count negatively, would you call them out on it? Yeah. Or would you let it slide? So what? this is what I would do. If a man takes, if one of my, none of my brethren would ever, none of my close friends anyway would ever talk like that ever. Yeah. But let's just say I heard someone that I know saying, oh yeah, like I met this woman and she slept with, but like, I would just ask him questions and I'd be like, what, that bothers you? Why does that bother you though? Don't you think that's just a bit mad? Like, why are you, like, how does that question even come up? Like when you're sitting and you're sitting down and you're, you're out for dinner, like how do you even bring that up? Because to me, I just think that is a crazy, crazy question. I'm never having dinner with someone or having a phone conversation with someone and asking them, how many people have you slept with? It's to, in my opinion, it's none of my business. Like, it's none of my, bi- and do you know what? 
Do you know why I could never Go ask someone Go on. why, Go on. how much people that they've slept with and, and talked to them on that? Because the reality is, to be honest with you, I'm a big man. I don't know. I don't know how many... If I sat down, maybe I might be able to write it all down. But off the top of my head, I don't know. So if I don't know, that doesn't change me as how I am as a person and how I'm going to treat you. So to me, hearing that just sounds mad. So I think, in essence, I would probably show them in a way that I think is weird. Like if it was a close friend, would you be like, what, hold on a second. The reason why it's just... difficult for me to even answer that question is because it's so, far, it's so far away from who they are as men to even, I, can't, I would have to really imagine like my friend saying something so ridiculous. Like, and it's so difficult for me to do that because these men are not like that. These men are top tier certified men. I'll be top honest tier. With you. 10 out of 10. Certified men. Taken though, certified, certified men. These men are not saying that. So I, for them to say something like that, I just think... It wouldn't happen. It just wouldn't saying. even happen. But then you're around people. You must hear stuff. Do you not yeah, of course, like, definitely. Do you, but you don't call it out. You just kind of give them an evil eye, like a side eye. Either I'll ask questions or I just won't say nothing. But I just think, oh, this is weird. This is not a conversation for me. I can't fight everything. And I'm not going to fight every fight all day. But depending on where we are, who we're around... And what the scenario is will determine how much this one needs to, how much I need to fight this one. And plus, how many other fights have I actually pushed you back on? Because there's certain people that in life, we just don't agree on a lot of things. And I'm constantly telling them, bro, that's mad. This is, and then, you know, you get to a point where you're just like, yeah, clearly you're just a Especially weirdo. if people won't listen to anything you say. Like it's different if someone's receptive and they actually take on board yeah. stuff that you say. But when someone doesn't listen to anything you say, then you get to a point where it's like, there's no point in me saying anything. It's just a waste of my breath. Yeah, there you go. A little bit like the people in my comments, the men in my comments. What, what do you get like, are they onto you? Especially if I do stuff about being single and happy. That's the worst. That really Why, gets really? angry. So angry about what, that. What, they get pissed about that? I'm really angry. So angry Why? Because so so you're supposed anger. to have a man in that? No, because I'm a leftover woman. I haven't filled my purpose in life. Oh my my only purpose in life. I'm going to die alone. It, I think it's just, I, I think it's this, we're in a really, I think, interesting time at the moment where I guess, I think, I feel like women, you know, if you went back, even like, I guess, my grandparents' time, maybe not my parents, but certainly my grandparents, like you needed a man to survive, right? And definitely, I guess, with my parents as well, it was like the done thing that you got married, like you had a family, especially at like quite a young age. And I feel like we have a society that's created by men for men and men kind of have this idea that, you know, just by being a man, that means I get a woman. And, and life is now not working out like that. Cause I women think it's the like, other way around as well, though. Uh, I what? think some women feel like this because they're a woman, they, should, they will just have a man. Do you think? I yes. don't think we do that. But I do agree with, like, I understand the patriarchal aspect of I think things. That, I think what I'm trying to say is I think some men are getting upset that women don't need them. And, and I think it makes them question, like, it must be quite scary. Like, where do I fit? Or, like, you know, what yeah. do I have to do for some... Like, it's just a... I think the problem is, is the, and the message is... The, the message, I think the message today just feels wrong. We're all acting as though we don't need each other when we need each other. I'm not saying that I don't need anybody. I've never said that. My, my, and I, and this is what, if they read, if people bothered to read my captions, they'd understand exactly what I'm trying to say. But my thing is, I, I'd really love to have a relationship. Like Absolutely. I want a relationship. I'd love to have a relationship. I'm fully aware of, you know, what that could bring to my life. Yeah. But, a, I don't want a relationship that's subpar for the sake of having a relationship because mm. that doesn't make any sense. My mm. life is really fucking good. So yeah. if someone's going to come into my life, then they need to be adding something Absolutely. in the same way that I would want to be doing that for them, right? Yeah. So that's the number one point. And number two point, if you think I'm going to waste one day of my life being sad, miserable and unhappy whilst I'm single, you're wrong because life is so fucking short. We don't right. have time for that. So all I'm saying is... I am making my life the best it can possibly be. I'm not close to people. I'm not like, I don't think I'm hard. I think I'm quite open. Like I'm, you know, I think I'm in the perfect place to be in a really great relationship when I find that person. And mm. that's all I'm saying. And that all, what I want people to understand is that being single isn't shameful mm -hmm. and that you can be single and be enjoy your time of being single. Like mm. that's it. And people get very angry about it. They don't like it. As long as you're not sticking corn in your pussy. No, then, we're fine. Then you're fine. Is that going to be a reoccurring theme? Possibly. What happens if I put a condom on it first? I've been thinking about this. It might work. Do you know what? That Safe. might be a sensational feeling, that. I'll be honest with you. There's probably that a sex one. toy for that. There's got to be a corn on the cob 
sex toy. Why have you said you know it out what? loud? I we could make that yeah, if it's not out there. Yeah, we could make that. Cute. Oh, oh wait, has he shown me one? Is there one? Yeah, but do you know what? The consistency and the thickness is not there, is it? No, it's wrong. It just kind of goes and like the that. the colour's a bit wrong as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. That looks like a carrot. It looks like a carrot corn on a cob. What, what's one thing about sex that you wish that everyone knew? I don't know. Can I say mine? Go on. I, because I haven't said, I would say communication is key. Like, I think when it comes to sex, communication Oh, is key. I'm trying to think of something mad, like... I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to think of, like, an, an actual act. Oh, so you're in your head, you're like, how can I sound really good right now? I've already dropped the Tims and the vest scenario. <laughs> I've already said that I eat pussy uh, and I've come up with a corn dildo. What more does yeah, she want? Yeah, I was thinking of an actual sexual act. I'm going to steal your one still. But again, you can't over communicate though. Because sometimes that is another thing. Right, what's over communicate? What do you mean when you're having sex and someone's talking through everything? Is that over communicating? Yeah, one time or? someone slapped me for that. What? <laughs> yeah. You were talking dirty and then. I was like, just, I was, yeah, I was talking up, talking up. But I was on a communication vibe, but I was just doing way too much talking. I think, again, I did a little, I was watching too much Wesley Pipes like, at the time. Shut up! Yeah, she was like, listen, can you just. Yeah, she was like, well, she shut you? up, please. Yeah, she was on top of me. And she slapped you and, and said, slapped shut me. the fuck up. So, exactly that. Yeah. That's exactly what she said. <laughs> she said, shut the fuck up. I was like, all right. Really? No, but I don't think that was the most enjoyable one for her anyway. No, I, I can imagine it probably wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> So you're not on the fucking podcast now, mate. <laughs> Shut up. Um, what's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you in bed? We had, like, one, I just came mad quick. It, the context to that was I'd wanted to sleep with this girl for so long, but she was also, like, a really big character too. So I knew that if I didn't perform a certain way, this was my rep on the line, yeah? Pressure. Listen, you see, as soon as I went in the Padan bread, it was done. It was literally done. And do you know what? I'll tell you the story behind that, Go yeah? On. So what's happened is now, when we're like, we're doing a little bit of foreplay or whatnot, but I could already sense that there's, I don't have a lot of fuel in this tank, yeah? So then now, <laughs> got the dom on, and then I went straight in the panan bread now. And then as soon as I'm in the panan bread, I'm like, oh my God. I didn't even need to, I just knew one stride, just one, and I was gonna bust. Literally, that's what happened. And as soon as I did that, like clockwork, my phone rang. <gasps> so I'm still trying to do the stride. So see, like after you bust, well me, it was like, it was softening up now. And then it just gets to that point where it just goes so soft that as soon as you come out, it just falls out. Yeah. But it didn't do that at that point. My phone's rang. So you were like, you styled it out? So I like, I'm saying to her, do you know what? I'm, I think I really need to take this call. Oh, I bet you fucking do. <laughs> this is her, she was like, she was like, Okay, so I've got up. So already I could see the dismay on her face, yeah? I picked up the phone, it was my cousin David. You pretend so it's like, an emergency? So I said, yo, David, what's going on? He's like, yo, where are you? I said, oh, I'm just at my yard, what's going on? He's like, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm just with someone. Are you all right? He was like, yeah, um, I'll, I'll just shout you back in a bit then, because you're with someone. I was, I was like, all right, cool. Then he's come off the phone and I've walked into the bathroom and I'm like, what? Where? He did what? <laughs> when? What, do you want me to pull up? I started doing all the way. I started to pull up. Yo, what? Where are you? Are you stranded? Are you I started doing all of that for, t for time in the bathroom, yeah? So when I've come out of the bathroom, she's sitting on the edge of the bed, like, is everything okay? Then I'm like, nah, like my cousin's gone. And I said, look, like, he's fine, but I'm just stressed out now. Can we just go for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> so we went for a walk now. We went out to McDonald's. We went to McDonald's, went for a walk around, like, had like a walk around like a, the area and whatnot. And then by the time I came back, I was... You're ready to go again? Ready for round two? Yeah, sort of. Not, not straight awake. I'm not one of them dons. Like, it takes me a minute. Does she know about that? No, not to this day. Will she she doesn't know. But she, she watched this? This was a while her. ago. So if she watched this, she would definitely know it was her. Because the way I was in the bathroom, I was Samuel L. Jackson in this thing to <laughs> Doing bits. Doing your best acting. <laughs> to bits. What's the wildest thing that you've ever done in bed? So the wildest thing is, I would say, for me, yeah. I'm quite vanilla. Yeah. I feel like I'm quite vanilla. Just me on that. I think I am as well. Yeah, I think I'm quite vanilla. But I'm definitely down to like... Yeah, I've brought, we've brought sex toys into the, into the equation. 
But like, I think that's me, quite that's a standard, what, isn't it? Uh, I think it's taken me a pl it's taken me a while to get there, and not on me. I don't want anyone to clip this up and say that anything's going in me. Apart from the corn. <laughs> Apart from the corn. But no, like there's a couple of times where it's like, you know what? Let's take this out. Let's do this and play around with it or whatever. And you get a reaction. You get a reaction from it, which then makes me want to do more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm saying that that's where my wild thing goes. And also, I'd probably say like. Um, 2022 was a, a poignant year for me because that was the first time I ate ass. Oh, right. Yeah. Gave, it a, gave it a strong go. I mean, I I'm, I'm sure like the person I was seeing before will say that I got close to it because I did. I don't, but I didn't what get to What made you want to just dive in at that point? You know what? In 2022. What was it about 2022? I just feel like I'm, as a man, I'm just indulging and just trying to discover what the meaning of life is. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? You definitely find that. And so, an like, I just thought, you know what? Let me try this and see the reaction to this. Bearing in mind there was a conversation prior to that as well, a little communication and whatnot. Consent. And I thought, you know what? Let's give it. Let's give it a young go. And yeah, fresh. Straight out of the shower, all these type of things, boom, boom, boom. So I felt comfortable because before, remember, I had the odor situation with the, the particles on the, you understand what I'm saying? Had the particles on the arse, the lips particles. and that. So this was like super clean, fresh, was in the vibes and whatnot. And we just gave it a go. And would you do it again? Yeah. So if you go KFC, you're going to get, you can get the chicken with the chips and a drink. And then yeah. you might, you can get, you can change up with a burger and whatnot. But you know, every once in a while, they might have that special. Yeah. That special is available only occasionally because it's a special. Oh, I wouldn't just, it's not just part of the meal deal. What's the worst sexual experience you've ever had? Was it? It was the, oh no. I mean, I've had a couple of them, um, but I would, I'm going to go with the one with the particle. Uh, yeah, there was like particles on the, on the arse lips and it was, and it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and do you know what as well, yeah? Oh. And do you know what? It just was, it smelled really, really bad. And from then I was just like, yeah, I need to, I need to, I had to fake orgasm That's that it. one. It's a, it just reminds me of this story. So I was, talk, I don't know where, where I was on holiday somewhere and I was talking to this guy and he told me that he wouldn't have sex with an English girl again because he'd had sex with this girl. And then when he put her into doggy, she had, <laughs> funny talking about corn, she had sweet corn like, oh, stuck on that bum hole. <laughs> oh my God, man. But these things so happen, basically, like, she, yeah. So what she took happen. a shit, she I had sweet corn before, took a yeah. shit and that, and then a bit of the sweet corn. Maybe it just worked its way out. Yeah, man. See, yeah. That, but you know what? We can sit here, especially as guys, and we can laugh about that, yeah? Fine. But hear what I'm saying? I know you're not a guy. Yeah. We could do that, yeah? But what would happen if a woman bent you over? Yeah. What's she seeing? Exactly. How many of you lot are taking care of your bottom lips? You know what, the reason, I, the reason I think, like, I was speaking to comedian Grace Campbell earlier, and she was saying sex is funny. Like, some of the stuff that happens, oh, it is actually funny. comical. Like, it's not to laugh at a certain person. But I'm sure there's stuff that's happened to everybody that's, like, cringy or, like, horrific or whatever, because that's just the nature of sex in the human body, right? Like, mm. that's just the way it works. So, you know... Um, I'm not sh putting shame on anyone. I just thought, like, when you told me that story, it just reminded me of that guy, and uh, it was, it just made me laugh. Yeah, there was one time where I was like, um, we, was, we was having sex, and then, yeah, United was playing. And then, like, I just was, I, I just needed to hear, I just needed to know what was going on, because the commentator was doing, you know what happens is, yeah, the commentator- Why is the football even on? What, well, it was on the TV? It was on the TV. Oh, so it's you just, like, if I just like, lay down, I can just- No, nah, so at, but basically the TV was there and we so was chopping in this thing. sideways. No. So I'm, but I'm hearing the commentator doing bare stuff and I'm hearing the crowd noise and whatever. So I've, we've picked, I've picked her up as part of the vibe and whatnot and put her this way now. So the you TV's there. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, oh yeah. But that way, you know what, they, I get a little bit more, there's a little bit more fuel in the tank because I'm not thinking about the ejaculation. Because you're so watching get, football. Yeah, we get like an extra, <laughs> you get an extra seven minutes out of me. That's taken multitasking to the, to the extremes really, isn't it? United score and then I come. Yeah, is that what happened? Mm. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just Ronaldo! <laughs> <laughs> um, are you confident naked? Uh, yeah. Have you always been confident naked? No. What was the change? How did you get confident naked? I think uh, being in a relationship for quite a, a long period of time probably helped me with that. What weren't you confident about? I don't know, when you're walking around with a soft dick and that, like, you know, like, I think 
for me, yeah, I always just, this is conditioning now. This is conditioning. So I'm being super transparent now. I always thought, or usually when I take my dick out, my dick has to be hard with a woman. Yeah. So, or semi. Usually when I'm, your first experience with taking your dick out with a woman, it's usually either semi or hard. You don't usually just take your pants off on a, they're just, that's just that and you're walking around. It's usually in the mix of something, unless you're, you know, family member and whatnot, which you shouldn't be. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, um, so I think for years of just being in that scenario where I've taken my pants off, to then walk around naked just didn't feel like a natural thing to me until when I got comfortable with someone and I was with them for a long period of mm. time or whatnot, you end up, you have these moments where you, you know, you're around each other a lot, you have sex and whatnot, and then you're in bed all day doing nothing all the time. And like, you just kind of get to that level of comfortability where you do that. And for then for me, it transferred over into like, me as I started to get older yeah. too that I just was like but are you confident like would you be naked in your own home on your own yes I'm naked in my in my own home quite often I think it's I think it's really good for everyone to just be naked more because it gets you like you're used to just seeing your body as it actually is yeah we, we told a joke about this quite recently but it was like I used to always say you know like when someone says oh I sleep naked and that and I'd be like oh yeah I sleep I naked saw this too and you reach for your boxes but as soon as after we chop now I'm trying to find my boxes and my boxes are always over there. So it's like, oh, for God's sake, where's my thing? I've got to find my boxes or whatever. But like, I don't sleep naked like that. Sometimes if I'm just like, if I'm just, if I'm in bed and I might have an erection, but I'm not horny. I could just be, I just could just have an erection and that. Then I'll just take my boxes off because it's stifling and then I'll just go to sleep. <laughs> but like, I'm not, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and say that I go nude in my bed all the time or whatever, but I'll walk, I'll get up out of my bed. If I've gone to sleep without my boxes on and then I'm getting up to go to the toilet, I'm getting up to go and get something to eat or a drink or whatever, I will stay naked and go downstairs and do that. If someone wanted to get you into bed, what would be your green flags? I'll find maybe weird, not weird things attractive, but like... Like what though? I don't know, like, let's just say for example, yeah, if I'm talking to a girl and she's kind of into me and then she's telling me about something that she's passionate about, yeah. Oh my God. If I was a woman, I'd be damp in a panty. There's something about like a woman, let's just say for example, she's damp a lawyer. A panty. Let's okay, just say yeah. she's a lawyer, yeah. yeah? Yeah. And she's talking about like a, an injustice or something that she's really, really passionate about. Oh, it just does something to me. Like, I just like that. So you know what? If passionate you could, people. if you're passionate about, but not like aggressively passionate, but if you like, I don't Just know, if you, sta if you stand, if you're standing for something, mm. that does, that turns me on. Mm. That really turns me on. And what are your, your red flags, like your turn offs? Um, oh. Hygiene, obviously. And I'm not into ignorance. Like, I like ignorance to a point, but it's like the way that some people project ignorance turns me off. So like- But well, what ignorance I'm, do you like? Nah, like say you don't know much about something and you're just oh, right, like, okay. You know, we're having ignorance a conversation. To it. But I think that you can be it. ignorant to something or you can be an ignorant person. Right. They're two different things. So if an ignorant, like an ignorant woman is just hella, a hella turn off to me. I love hearing a woman X. talking about something that she really is passionate about. There's something about that in that for me. That's how you get them into bed, guys. Be passionate about Well, you've, we've obviously got, we've obviously got kind of like each other. What if they're really passionate about badges? Yeah, anything, it could be anything. Anything? Yeah, pretty much. Badges, whatever. It could be, it could be literally anything. Something that I don't know nothing about. That's another thing. Are you talking to me about something I know nothing about and you're passionate about it and I'm just watching you talk about it and you like me and I kind of like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, tonight is you. Tonight is you. Tonight? Well, we've come to the end of our Oh, uh, do you know what? Let me tell you this, yeah? Go on. I was looking forward to this and I don't even do stuff. I don't even like to do things. I'll be honest with you. I don't even really like to do things. I just like to do my content just like to do and whatever. Yeah. Content. So I'm so happy that you invited me on to do this because I just think, I see what you're doing in that and I just love it. I just love it. Thanks. So yeah. How does it feel now you've been here in the bed? Have you enjoyed it? I feel like I've lost my virginity. Again. Uh, again. And, but this time the experience was actually pretty good because the first time I lost my virginity was not that great. What happened? I was so in a place where I couldn't believe it was happening. I wasn't able to enjoy the panan bread. 
So I was like, what is this Panam bread? So what I'm saying is, I was like inside the Panam bread, and I was looking at my um, my my ass in the sh- in the shadow, so like I could see my ass going up and down in the thing, and I was well, looking it's not at up it. Up and down though, is it? Oh yeah, it was like this. Yeah, it was like that. And then she looked at me and she was like, "What are you looking at?" And I was like, "Nothing." And then like we just kept going again, and then I just came, and it was just nothing. So it was a bit dead. Well, we can go to go to sleep now. Oh, let's have a little nap. Oh. You've broken my bed, by the way. Um, you broke my bed? You can boast to your friends about corner, that. Or? What? Taking the corn out. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taking the corn out. I'm just going to watch football on my iPad. What? Yeah. What are you talking about? That's what you do, isn't it? No. Multitasking. <laughs>